Let's get into it. Liz Fair was born in April of 1967 in New Haven, Connecticut. She, but she's raised in Cincinnati and Chicago. And after trying her hand at trying to make it in music in San Francisco in 1990, after graduating college, she moved back to Chicago where she started making self-made, self-released tapes under the name Girly Sound. It was those tapes that got her signed to indie label Matador, which made her debut album 1993's Exile in Guyville, which like I said is celebrating its 30th anniversary. The album was released to complete cr critical acclaim. The the sound and the songwriting and the and everything just kind of hit with critics in that time and people in that time who considered this album a masterpiece an album really which has almost kind of been forgotten in a way from that early 90s stuff but it's even in a way gaining acclaim as it ages even if not in the zeitgeist of you know the population like earlier 90s albums from like Radiohead or Pearl Jam and Jeff Buckley uh Smashing Pumpkins you know the list can go on and on from bands in that time but like I said the acclaim seems to be kind of growing in the appreciation of that album which is highlighted with Rolling Stone's 500 greatest albums of all time. In 03, the album was 328th on the list. In 2012, is 327, and in 2020, it hit 56 of the greatest albums of all time. And in a way, I can almost kind of see it. If you listen to the album, kind of the lo-fi sound and just the sound of it, I think maybe artists today within that kind of have influenced how it's per maybe perceived critically because you can kind of almost see with newer artists kind of a modernized version of that album but without dwelling too much on Exile and Guyville which is still her Liz Fair's biggest album and most recognized. Fair was actually surprised by the success of the album not really believing how well it did you know it didn't blow up it didn't go platinum but it did end up going gold in five years but uh she just thought like making an album in itself an 18 track album in itself an accomplishment moving on to whip smart her sophomore album it was liked not as acclaimed as exile but was still liked to got her a best female rock vocal performance uh, Grammy nomination for Supernova. And her albums after that didn't quite hit the success, both critically and uh, commercially as Exile and Guyville. And in 2003, along with singing backup for Sheryl Crow's Soak Up the Sun, she released her first album on Capitol Records after moving on from Matador, and that was her self-titled album, Liz Fair. It did not fare well uh, at all. It was, it wasn't just disliked by critics and fans. It was kind of reviled. It, she went for a more commercial pop sound, even uh, pulling in the team kind of that made hits for Britney Spears and Backstreet Boys and Avril Lavigne. And it also, it, it got, some airplay on VH1 and stuff like that, but again, it didn't have that commercial success that she was hoping for when she made the album. She wanted a more commercially accessible album and kind of a more grown-up album as well. Though in saying that, I wouldn't be surprised if the song that you recognize most is the song Why Can't I from the album. She She's continued to make records but in 2009, actually, whilst making albums, she has forayed into the world of composing and television composing, starting when a friend of hers, Mike Kelly, asked her to compose for a new show he's making about, actually, that took place in their hometown uh, outside of Chicago called Swingtown. So 
she did the first season that only lasted 13 episodes. She did that. And since then, she's done, uh, like, the first season of the 90210 reboot, uh, the USA show In Plain Sight. Uh, she did a few episodes in season three and four in the full uh, uh, season five, as well as the first two seasons of the CW's The 100. Um, and has since been making albums, but just never has hit that um, critical or commercial success that Exile and Guyville did 30 years ago. So just kind of wrapping up, it, it's an album in a, in a person. It, Liz Fair, you know, made this album 30 years ago that has had influence, but kind of just influence in the background uh, and in that time period of like this sound, this kind of raw, lo-fi indie rock sound, um, but it took kind of maybe 30 years to make, have it kind of come back and maybe find its footing again with a newer audience. So let me know, did you know who Liz Fair was before watching this video? Did you know the album and What's your favorite song of hers? Maybe you love the Liz Fair album. And don't forget to subscribe. And you can check out backlinebeat.com for more music related content. Uh, I've got album recommendations like I do on this channel. They'll be popping up soon. Um, as well as interviews. Again, you can also see them here, but uh, Concert galleries are my bread and butter, and you can see that there, so. Um, and also, if you'd like to help the channel and the site keep going and grow, uh, there's you can contribute, and there's ways to do so in the links in the description box below, and I'd be very appreciative um, if you can do that. If you can't, again, just subscribe, leave a comment, like, head over uh, to the site or over to my socials and follow and stuff like that. And so thanks and have yourself a good one.